kind of psychic. Really? It's like I have ESPN or something. Now, the plastics. Who are the plastics? Their teen royalty are back. It's so embarrassing how much they love me. Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Coolness. So we'll see you tomorrow. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Regina's like the Barbie doll I never had. I'd never seen anybody so glamorous. Regina, please. Regina, stop. Do you know what everyone says about you? They say that you're a homeschooled jungle freak who's a less hot version of me. Yeah. So don't try to act so innocent. You can take that fake apology and shove it right up your hairy ass. Plastics are simply taken for granted. They permeate every area of our everyday lives. And not only in the form of the many articles in daily use, like toothbrushes, microwave ovens, telephones, furniture, packaging, and functional clothing. Indeed, without plastic, our entire world of information and communication, as well as modern medicine, would be inconceivable. Plastic is not only practical, colorful, and soft to the touch. Many plastic materials give off dangerous chemicals throughout a product's entire life. Blood tests carried out all over Europe by the WWF have shown that all of us carry traces of additives from plastics, like softeners, for instance. Plastic is basically a brittle material, and softeners are used to make plastic products more flexible. Then there are flame retardants, which ensure that plastics don't catch fire easily. But although softeners are introduced into plastic products, they don't form a permanent bond with them. So, they're released during use. As we all know, after a while, plastic material becomes brittle. That's because these substances have escaped. They're in the air around us, in house dust. They're part of our environment, and we inhale them. If you're buying organic food, well, good for you. But you still might be exposing yourself and your family to chemicals. It all comes down to one word, plastics. One plastic that's controversial is the one that contains something called bisphenol A. Canada has now labeled bisphenol A as toxic and banned it from use in baby bottles and other baby products. On the other hand, American regulators maintain that bisphenol A is safe in the amounts an average person would consume. But you may have heard some news about the toxins in plastics, and some parents are so concerned that they've gone back to using glass baby bottles and things like that. Um, but the FDA says don't be concerned. And Dr. Anna Mendenhall joins us again from the Children's Physicians Medical Group to talk about this. And it is a very interesting topic just because so many parents are alarmed. And you said you've been getting a lot of emails at work. Basically, there's a lot of urban myths out there that are unfounded on reality. So you'll get things about, you know, don't freeze your water bottles. Don't Know, to leave them in your car, um, all these different alarming emails that um, sound credible but actually are not founded in reality at all and there's no chemicals leaching into your water from from doing this. Yeah, the chemical in question is what, bisphenol A? Right, that's the one that um, is kind of people are talking about that with um, the baby bottles as well because that is added to plastics so that plastics don't break when you drop them. If you get BPA free bottles um, they are much um, more breakable and they, they can shatter just like a glass bottle. They can shatter just like a glass bottle. Plastic bottles are not safe for use like we may have thought they are. Different components in plastic, such as BPA, PVC, belong to a category called xenoestrogens, estrogen-like substances, substances that mimic the effects of estrogens. These substances disrupt our hormonal endocrine system, our antioxidant system, the system that repairs the oxidative stress, the damage in the body, they can also disrupt the DNA. And what are the results? They can cause cancer, other abnormalities.
from heart disease and diabetes to developmental problems in infants and children. The interesting thing is that the amount of these substances that is leached into the water and into the beverages is not always the same. It very often depends on the temperature. The temperature is a very critical factor. If this bottle is sitting in the refrigerator, it will leach dramatically less amount compared to this bottle being in a truck in the middle of the day in Arizona, where the temperature inside the truck can be 120 or 130 or even 140 degrees. So here we have a packaging, a bottle, that actually can damage our health. We can buy pure spring water in a plastic bottle that has been sitting in the sun, and actually while we drink this water that we think is healthy for us, we are damaging our health. Did you know? Many common carbonless cash register receipts are coated in a layer of BPA. As much as 100 milligrams of the substance per receipt can potentially rub off and be absorbed. You've probably struggled to open them. They're called clamshell packaging, and it's what consumers have to get through to get to many products. Assemblymember Julia Brownlee wants Californians to know clamshell packaging is not only difficult to open, but they're also dangerous because they're mostly made with PVC. PVC is so bad and so toxic that many people call it a poison plastic. So we're here today to raise awareness about toxic chemicals that are in toys. We know that safety regulations for toys and other children's products currently do not address toxic chemicals like bisphenol A, which is in baby bottles. The population that we're most concerned about is the developing fetus and the developing infant. Um, this is the population that is exposed to high levels of chemicals with no ability to protect themselves from it. So, for instance, a lot of the toys that we buy for our children, things that are pliable like rubber duckies and chew toys, things that we think are safe because they're marketed for children, are often made with estrogenic and anti-androgenic and androgenic activity. Why is this now happening? We don't completely understand the reason for that, Chris. There are a couple of theories out there. And I found out that we are constantly being exposed to artificial estrogens in our environment. Estrogen is part of the key hormones that triggers puberty. Obviously, we have a lot more children who are overweight and obese. Also, there's a theory that environmental exposures, things like BPA, that are ubiquitous in our environment, can have hormone-like activity, and research is ongoing as, as to whether that plays a role. In the 1940s, a woman's risk of developing breast cancer was 1 in 22. In the 1960s, her risk was 1 in 14. And today, one in seven women are at risk for developing breast cancer in their lives. Genetics alone cannot explain these changes. In fact, genetics can't explain rapid changes like that at all. Wow. So are BPA and other toxins still used? The answer, yes. But at least they got you to buy it. Learn the science, not the hype. I'm sure you've seen the numbers that are molded or imprinted on your plastic bottles and containers. These different numbers tell us what type of plastic went into manufacturing the bottle or container, but that is all they tell us. The numbers found on plastic bottles and containers do not signify whether or not our local towns will recycle those containers. They do not indicate the safe or intended use of a product, and they should not be used for that purpose. This is false and potentially harmful misinformation. Be aware that most canned foods and some canned beverages are lined with a BPA resin. So until the food industry responds to these concerns, avoid cans. Buy fresh instead, and if you must have that soda, look for soda in glass bottles.
I'd like to make a comment, and that is that I'm always afraid to ask you about something because when you do, I have to go away saying, boy, I can't do that anymore. I mean, you were telling me that styrofoam creates major health problems? Absolutely. Styrofoam not only is obviously a, a conglomerate, it's a toxic soup of chemicals that are made. When you get soup, and people pop it in the microwave in an office, for instance, because it's easy to take. When you heat that, that styrofoam becomes a neurotoxin. We've talked about that, where it actually can kill neurons in the brain. And it, it, is also, it affects the, the respiratory system. It affects, um, and if it's inhaled, if you bring that cup of soup out and you go like that to see if it's hot enough, you're inhaling those fumes, which is extremely toxic. It can cause asthma, flu-like symptoms, muscle aches and pains, much like having the flu or a fibromyalgia-type symptoms. Lots of fishing line. And then there's also what we call industrial plastic, which are the pellets that start the whole process. If you want to make a toy soldier, you'll order pellets. And those look almost exactly like fish eggs. Which is why albatross parents scoop them up and bring them home to feed their young. For the chicks, it's an unhappy meal their stomach is full of plastic that is displacing water, so they might be dying of dehydration. Or it's just malnutrition. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it would be really hard for parents to have a uh, completely plastic-free environment. It would be. It would everything be. has plastic in it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for being here. It's always good to see you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All right. I cannot promise you convenience, but I can promise better health. Plastic is an actual drug and should be treated as such. For a few seconds of euphoric convenience, this dangerous toxin stays lodged in the fatty tissue cells of the body forever, growing worse with time, making it increasingly difficult on our elderly and the sick. Because after the plastics make people ill, they're taken to hospitals where they're surrounded by and treated with more plastic, and it's a vicious, vicious cycle. For the rest of us, it's making us stupid and mean to one another, mimicking the effects of heroin. They say you're only three feet away from a plastic at any given time. So start with a new awareness and look at your home, combing every inch for plastics and immediately recycle everything that you can live without. For the essential living items, you'll need to get creative. The top priority is to rid your fridge of all plastics, knowing everything can be substituted for glass or even paper bags. If you have to buy a store-bought product with plastic, Wearing gloves, strip it immediately and restore it in a safe container.